Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is Jason's Weird Reads, and I'm Jason White. Welcome back if you're uh, if you're regular, if you come here regularly. If not, and you're new, uh, please uh, consider hitting the, uh, the subscribe button down below there. And especially if you're into horror, science fiction, and fantasy. And comment. Uh, please comment in the comments below. I love discussing books with you. So, this is an extension of my last video, which was Top Free Horror Books. And so this is my top three weird fiction books. Now, as a disclaimer, obviously these aren't technically free. You have to have a, a scribd account. And uh, with that comes a plethora of ebooks and audiobooks that you can consume. Now, there are some issues that some people have had with this service. And I discussed them in, in that last video. I'll put them up there uh, so you can go check that out. Uh, but basically, it's a good... It's a good and legit service that uh, it's, it's getting hard to figure out which ones are the legit ones these days and which ones are actually funneling money towards the authors. So uh, if you hear any weird noises in the background, it's just my son. He's playing his uh, tablet. All right. So uh, also one more thing before I get to the books. If you're interested in checking out the service for yourself, there's a link down below and if you do sign up you'll get I believe it's 60 60 days as a free trial membership and also I might get uh, a month free I'm not too sure about that but whatever I've been using the service for about a year now and uh, it's it's helped me read a lot because my my library service isn't the greatest my uh, my you know my tab or tab my app I we have Libby where I'm from and uh, there's not too many crossings from different library branches, and the selection is it, it's pretty it's pretty grim. And what they do have tends to have like a waiting list that's ridiculous. All right, so on to the books. The first book I have is *The King in Yellow*. This is by Robert Chambers, and it is a classic. This is available as an audiobook and an ebook. This is a collection of short stories, and uh, well, you'll find that most weird fiction is either short stories or novella. They just tend to work, just like horror, they tend to work better in the shorter form. And uh, but I've really, I really enjoyed this book. It's been a little while since I've read it. I want to read it again, as with a lot of books, but uh, I highly recommend this, especially if you're interested in weird fiction and where it comes from. This is uh, pretty much standard reading for that genre, so definitely check that out. The next book I have, and I was surprised to see there, I was surprised to see a lot of books there actually, but these books especially, uh, this was released recently, I believe, late last year, and it's A Lush and Seething Hell by John Horner Jacobs. And this is also available as an ebook and audiobook. Further disclaimer, I keep forgetting to say this. But this service just it works just like Netflix, so that uh, when the licensing for the book runs out, your book and your TBR will disappear. And it might come back, it might not, depends if they renew the license or not. So just keep that in mind, especially if you're watching this a year from now, these books might not be there anymore. All right, so A Lush and Seething Hell from John Horner Jacobs. This uh, brings together two of his acclaimed novellas, and, uh, well, one is acclaimed. I guess the other one's about to be acclaimed, maybe, because one's brand new. Uh, the one that has uh, been published previously is The Sea Dreams, It Is the Sky, and it also has the new short novel, uh, My Heart Struck Sorrow. And uh, these, uh, both these stories sound very fascinating to me. I haven't read them yet, but uh, I'm not going to read the description because I forgot to copy and paste them into my, onto my uh, note thing here. So, so there's that. But uh, at least you know what you're going into. You do have two novellas, and one's new, and one is not new. And the one is uh, really well, you know, it's it's beloved by a lot of people, and I want to read it. So, all right. Next, I have Songs for un for the Unraveling of the World by Brian Evenson. Now, they have actually a few uh, collections of uh, short stories. 
by Brian Evenson. And that's surprising because if you go and look on Amazon at the ebook prices, they're just they're astronomically high. They're like 15, 16 bucks. So uh, so definitely uh, <laughs> take advantage of this. Uh, if you have Bookbub, by the way, and you're looking to get into reading Brian Evenson books, Evenson books, uh, every once in a while they'll pop up there for like a buck, a dollar ninety nine, and I have taken advantage of that. Okay, so. Uh, a song for the unraveling of the world here's a little brief description of what it what types of stories are in there a newborn excuse me a newborn's absent face appears on the back of someone else's hand <laughs> there's weird fiction for you right there uh, a filmmaker goes to gruesome lengths to achieve the silence he's after for his final scene and a therapist begins impossibly to appear in a troubled patient's room late at night. So these, uh, to, fur to read further in the description, uh, these story in these stories of doubt, delusion, and paranoia, no belief, no claim to objectivity, is immune to the distortions of human perception. Here, self-deception is a means of justifying our most inhuman pulses, whether we know it or not. So that sounds fascinating. The next selection or uh, suggestion I have for you here is uh, Laird Barron. Now, Laird Barron, a lot of his weird fiction, if not all of it, is on here. I couldn't find his recent books, his uh, crime noir novels, but his collections are here. And I'm going to suggest Swift to Chase because it's the one I read the most recent. And these stories are all interconnected, uh, taking place or at least... Uh, they're all like Alaska stories because uh, Laird Barron is from Alaska and if Alaska isn't central to the story Alaska haunts the story in one way or another and I highly recommend these books uh, they don't really like go into Laird Barron's life at all from what I can tell um, <laughs> but uh, but he did use his uh, you know where he grew up from as a huge uh, influence in this collection and they all kind of intertwine e2 uh, especially with uh, with a character a, a returning character who comes and goes throughout the uh, the collection of stories and that's Jessica oh, I can't remember her last name but Jessica something or other uh, so yeah definitely like definitely check out Laird Baron if you haven't um, especially if you're interested I actually had a comment in one of my uh, videos where I recommended Laird Baron to brand new weird fiction writers. He was like, how could you do that? And I was like, you know what? If you can't, if you read Laird Baron and you're not impressed by anything at all and you don't like it, it's probably best to just move on from weird fiction at all because a lot of weird fiction has dense, complicated writing and there's usually very little to no plot and uh, also it's very heavily character driven. So if you don't like those things, and you find that you don't like Laird Baron, then it this genre is not for you. And he was like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> so so that was kind of funny. All right, the next one will have a shorter description because it's Skull Crusher, the very best weird fiction from Robert E. Howard. This is available as an ebook. Oh, I should mention also that all the Laird Barons that I could find, they were all ebook available only. Um, so Skull Crusher. This is basically uh, a collection of the weird fiction from Robert E. Howard. If you don't know who Robert Howard is, he's the guy who uh, created Conan, the Barbarian. And uh, I believe that there's a lot of Conan stories in this collection. And I've read a lot of Conan stories myself, and uh, <laughs> they're very dense and, and very dark. It, it's incredible how dark his prose was for the time that he wrote them and I I really enjoy Conan I haven't read them all but I really want to okay next is the diving pool by Yoko Agawa and this is available as an ebook and this is another collection of novellas I'm gonna read you the description at least part of it here a lonely teenage girl falls in love with her foster brother as she watches him leap from a high board into a pool. A particular infatuation that sends unexpected ripples through her life. 
Uh, a young woman records the daily moves of her pregnant sister in a diary, taking meticulous notes of a pregnancy that may or may not be a hallucination. But whose hallucination is it? Hers or her sister's? That's a damn good question. A woman nostalgically visits her old college dorm dormitory on the outskirts of Tokyo, a boarding house run by a mysterious triple amputee with one leg. So that that's <laughs> that sounds quite good. I haven't read it myself yet, and uh, but it's on my uh, TBR, and I'm looking forward to reading it whenever it is I get to it. All right, next I have actually bought this book, and I haven't read it yet either. It's Wounds by Nathan Ballingrad. This is available as both an audiobook and an ebook, and it's, uh, it's a collection of short stories. I'm going to read you the synopsis here, or at least part of it. A strange and utterly entrancing collection of shits, <laughs> shit stories. <laughs> yeah, no, short stories, including one new novella, from the eerie, dread descending upon a New Orleans dive bartender after a cell phone is left behind in a rollicking bar fight in the visible filth, to the search for a map of hell in the butcher's table. Bellingrad's beautifully crafted stories are riveting in their quietly terrifying de 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 depictions of the murky line between the known and the unknown. Sounds fascinating to me. I have the ebook, and uh, actually, I think I put it, the audio version, on my to be read on Scribd, and I'm probably going to end up getting the physical copy as well because uh, that's kind of how I roll. Alright, next is Dark Dimensions of death selected weird fiction of, of clark ashton smith and this is edited by uh dm mitchell and it's available as an ebook only now <laughs> clark ashton smith he he writes very dense or wrote i should say because he's no longer alive he was a friend actually of hp lovecraft and i think he was friends with uh, robert e howard as well um Clark Ashton, unlike those other two, Clark Ashton Smith lived to be like really, really, he lived, he got old. He got really old and he, uh, he died an old man, obviously. Um, but his, like I said, his shirts, he, he wrote many different genres. Uh, he wrote science fiction. I think he wrote Westerns. He wrote horror and, uh, fantasy. Um, his, as I just said, his prose can be very dense and hard to sort of slog through, but it's well worth your, uh, and he was very prolific. I mean, he has like a lot of, a lot of stories out there. So it's definitely worth your, uh, worth your while investigating him. Um, I'm going to read you just a snippet of the, uh, of the description. Uh, along with H.P. Lovecraft and Howard, uh, Robert E. Howard, Clark Ashton Smith stands as part of the great, great stalwarts of horror fantasy writers who emerged from the ranks of Weird Tales magazine in the 1920s and 1930s. Whilst not quite as well known as these illustrious peers, Smith stands equal to them in terms of the brilliance, scope, and imagination within his writing. Dimensions of Death, an anthology of Smith's finest works, seeks to assert the author's rightful place at the summit of the genre. So it goes on to list a whole bunch of stories, and uh, you can tell a lot of them actually are probably, if not indefinitely, uh, Lovecraftian inspired. <laughs> so yeah, I, I haven't read Clark Ashton Smith extensively, but I've read a, a, a I've read a good part of his stories, and I recommend these ones because they're definitely, like, Lovecraftian, and some of them are just more like his own, and he's written a lot of classics, but I think, I'm not too sure, I'm trying to see if some of his classic, more well-known works are in here, but it doesn't say. So, yeah, this is on my list as well. You should check it out, maybe, too. Alright, next on my list is House of Windows by John Langan. This is available as an ebook. Now, the description for this is For the last few years, Veronica Croydon has been at the center of a scandal. First, as a younger woman for whom her famous professor left his wife, 
and then as the apparent widow of that man. When a writer staying at the same vacation home as Veronica has the chance to hear her story, he jumps at it. What follows is what follows takes him to the dark heart of a father's troubled relationship with his only son in a story that stretches from a college town in the Hudson Valley to the battlefields on Afghanistan, from post 9-11 America to the height of Victorian England. It is a story that leads inexorably to the Belvedere House, the home Veronica shares with her husband, within whose walls a father's terrible words to his son echo and gain an awful voice or force so it's a bit of a haunted house story kind of sounds like it might be a haunted life story as well all right uh second last here is uh wilding hall by elizabeth hand now you may have heard about this one um it was actually recommended to me when i recommended the final reconciliation by todd keesling uh, it, you know, and I read a few chapters of this on the script, uh, on the script app, and I have to agree, it's, there's, uh, there's similarities, it's not the same book by any means whatsoever, but, but there are similarities, and, uh, basically it follows a band that record an album in, uh, in the title of the book, Wildling Hall, and, uh, the singer goes missing and is never heard from ever again. And uh, so that, that sounds awesome to me. I really love that missing person type weird fiction, when, especially if they do come back, but I don't think he comes back in this one. All right, uh, moving on to the last one. And uh, I'm gonna recommend, especially if you wanna check out a wide variety of authors, I'm gonna, check, I'm gonna recommend a, uh, an anthology here, and that's Aikman's Hears or Aikman's Heirs, however you want to pronounce it. And this is an anthology edited by Simon Stransons. And now, there's uh, quite a few well-known weird fiction writers in here. Um, it's actually jam-packed full of, like, some of the best writers of weird fiction today. There's stories by Brian Evenson, Richard Evenson, uh, John Howard, David Nichol, D.P. Watt, Nadia Balkan, Michael Sisko, Linda E. Rucker, Michael Weehunt, John Langan, Helen Marshall, Malcolm Del Devlin, uh, Daniel Mills, uh, Nina Allen, and Lisa Tuttle. So that's a solid, solid anthology. And it's basically the the anthology for that or the concept and why it's called Aikman's heirs is because uh, uh, it's all stories set in the uh, in the style of Robert Aikman who who wrote uh, what he liked to call strange fiction uh, I think he wrote from uh, the 50s to the 70s somewhere and uh his his short stories are very slow burn some of them are just like way out there like my favorite from him at least so far the swords if you can find the swords by robert aikman i highly recommend reading it it's, it's truly bizarre and out there i love it but uh yeah so these stories sort of uh they sort of take on concepts that aikman wrote about and uh and they try to use his well they use his voice and so you know you can expect a lot of slow burn type stories in here but again that's weird fiction for you all right so if you've watched this long thank you so much for watching and uh i hope that you're all uh doing well both upstairs and physically out there because these are obviously some weird and troubling times but i you know i think we're going to pull through hopefully okay uh, so thank you for watching, keep being safe and healthy, and also keep being creative, and I will catch you guys in the next bookish video. Bye!